What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the AI Timeline where I cover the coolest AI developments in the past week. The most exciting news this week is definitely the Zero Scope V2 text video model. This collection has a total of three models and they are watermark free model scope based video models which are all trained to do different things. For those of you who don't know what model scope is or want to learn more about the current text video developments, you can check out this old video of mine for more context. The first model is the Zero Scope V2 XL model where you can generate at a resolution of 1024 times 576 up to 24 fps. The second model is the Zero Scope V2 576 W model, where it is trained to generate at a resolution of 576 times 320 up to 24 fps. So it's basically a lighter model compared to XL. The third model is the Zero Scope Dark V2 model, where its main focus is being able to generate at 30 fps. However, the resolution is slightly lower at 448 times 256 resolution. All the models were trained on 9,923 clips with 29,769 tagged frames, which is crazy. You can try it out now using automatic 1111 text to video extension to run all three of them. More workflows or instructions can be found on their hugging face model cards too. The other headline of the week is definitely Stable Diffusion's SDXL 0.9, their first base model focusing on generating images with greater details and composition. This model is still in beta, but it's available on ClipDrop right now, which is a new free service they made for generating images. And what you're seeing right now are the official comparisons of an older SDXL versus SDXL 0.9 which is the newer model. Like they have said, the compositions, the colors, the details are all much better. Here's another comparison between SDXL 0.9 and SD 1.5. This person on Reddit tried to use SD 1.5 to generate images as close as the SDXL 0.9 output. For the SD 1.5 images, they used control knit, inpainting, and upscaling and spent two hours on each image just to recreate images that are similar to SDXL. I think the main takeaway from this comparison is how much details SDXL is able to generate in the first try with no negative prompts, embeddings, LoRa's, just a base model with an incredible quality that is capable of handling top-notch composition, lighting, and even coloring. I mean, there's also a three-fingered Joe Biden output that SDXL generated, but we gotta give it a benefit of doubt because full-body generation is already hard to begin with. But just imagine what people can do with this model once it's released for the public. The AI image compositions that we all are used to, like the portraits, angle, style, and faces, might just all change once and for all. Or it might not make any huge changes like SD 2.1, who knows. I'll probably make dedicated videos for these two headlines in the future when they announce more stuff about it and when people have done cooler things with them, so stay tuned. Next up, we have our weekly dose of LLM news. This field is absolutely going crazy right now. Textbooks are all you need. This research paper made a large language model with only textbook quality data from the web, which is around 6 billion tokens and it can be used to generate textbooks and exercises. By only using high quality data, it was able to achieve more than 50% on human eval benchmark, which for context, most of the other models that are able to achieve 50% or more are at least 10 times larger than the model Phi-1, which is the model proposed in this paper. For more contrast, the GPT-3.5 is 100 times larger than Phi-1, yet performs slightly worse than Phi-1. Not only will we see a lot more creative scaling down of models which prioritize data quality and diversity over quantity, but also small but highly capable expert models. This is a good sign of progress as large corporations will no longer hold an exclusive or strong leverage against other people by just throwing an absurd amount of money at creating super large language models. Cosmos 2. This paper might be the big first steps towards the convergence of language, multimodal perception, action, and world modeling, which is definitely a key step towards artificial general intelligence. Cosmos 2 proposed a multimodal large language model, which has the ability to perceive object descriptions such as bounding boxes and ground text to the visual world. By having the object descriptions being sequences of location tokens along with the language tokens, it is capable of understanding multimodal input following instructions, perceive object descriptions, and ground any language to visuals. This research is definitely a big stepping stone towards the convergence of all these tasks. MBT30B Chat is a new model which is a commercially usable, 8K context length, 30 billion parameters, and chat fine-tuned ready that has been open sourced by Mosaic ML. For those of you who don't know 
about Mosaic ML, they are an open source startup known for its neural network expertise. And actually, Databricks, which is another software company, bought Mosaic ML for 1.3 billion, which is like six times its valuation from its previous round. Next up, we have Auro Palm, a large language model that can speak and listen, is a novel research that is able to do speech to speech translation, which incorporates both audio and text tokens in its generation process. Sono libero venerdì pomeriggio. I am free on Friday afternoon. Ale zas ten, kdo se dobře vyspí, vstane s nejčistší hlavou. But the one who sleeps well will wake up with the cleanest head. In their demo, the researchers all speak different languages, and Autopom generates an English translated voice while maintaining the voice highly similar to the speaker. There are currently methods that let you translate text, and it's not like they have entirely abandoned using text either, but this is the first research I've seen which can directly translate audio input to an audio output. What is also unique about this is that you can choose what accent you want to have. Next up, this paper is four weeks old, but I just came across it and it has some good takeaways. In it, they propose three main limitations of transformers in solving compositionally complex tasks. First, complex tasks require multiple independent iterations or applications of a function, but when a transformer executes these algorithms, it mostly acts as a probability estimator which decreases the chance of reaching the correct answer as the problem size increases. So I think this might explain why AutoGPT may be much more successful in problem solving compared to a single instance of GPT-4. Second, the models are able to correctly perform single step reasoning, potentially Essentially due to memorizing such single step operations during training. This then brings us to the third point, memorization which leads to incorrect calculations but correct answers. I believe that we have all tried to use ChatGPT to do math questions and they sometimes just land on the correct answer with completely wrong workings, right? Well, in this research, they found out that 82.3% of the final correct answers for the four digit by two digit multiplications had at least one error in the computation graph, but still somehow produced the correct answer. This may be explained by high frequency of multiplication pairs in the pre-training data, but not enough intermediate reasoning steps as the problem size like the multiplication digits increases. So yeah, language models don't really understand shit, let alone being cognitive capable. <laughs> Next, we have Motion GPT, which is a motion language model that has incorporated two modalities in order to generate high quality motions or generate text descriptions on multiple motion tasks. As body language can have a sign of semantic coupling to human language, this creates a kind of motion vocabulary which can be used together with language tokens. So it became this motion aware language model that is capable of text driven motion generation, motion captioning, motion predictions, and motion in betweens. And it's State of the art, pretty cool, right? On the non-research side of the LLM news, by using browsing mode on ChatGPT to navigate, you can get through paid world articles like the Fortune magazine. It was confirmed by AI Breakfast that it was not hallucinated because they paid for the magazine just to check if it was the same text. And to end this segment of LLM news, The Verge surveyed 2,000 US adults and interestingly, 43% have not heard of ChatGPT and only 25% have heard of Midjourney. What's also worth pointing out is that 25% knows Midjourney and 23% no stable diffusion. So basically most people are pretty well informed in text to image once they have gotten into the sphere. And here is the rest of the news, free for all rapid fire style. Midjourney 5.2 has just been released. It has an improved aesthetic system which is the stylized parameter, high variation mode which improves all the variation drops with controllable variation strength, a new shortened command that gives you suggestions on what words might be useless and which one is useful in your prompt, and the most popular feature, the zoom out in painting. There are four options right now, which is 1.5 times, 2 times, make square, or a custom zoom, which lets you specify an aspect ratio or a precise zoom. All the results I've seen so far are pretty sick, but I guess they probably had a FOMO about the Photoshop out painting that got really popular. <laughs> Unity just announced Unity Muse, so now instead of the good old coding, a built-in AI tool is here to assist you in video game creation. From code generation, text to motion, general game development guidance, texture generation, and asset generation, you will now have it all. On top of that, Unity also announced Unity Centis, which embed neural networks in your builds to enable better real-time processing for Unity runtime. Centis will help you deploy the models onto the end user, so a real-time super fancy 3D engine is probably now possible to run on a super cheap GPU. Both are now in closed beta. 
Panelhead, which is a research paper published back in March 23rd, has released its codes two weeks ago. It only caught my eyes this week when people started to post results that used some 2D stable diffusion portraits to generate a 3D head, which is pretty cool. It is a GAN-based research, so it has the limitations of needing to find the nearest latent space representation when taking an input to generate an output. So basically what that means is that the face wouldn't look 100% accurate. But the rock having a pointy head is probably the funniest thing I've seen today. On the topic of GAN, if you guys remember Dragon, which is a point-based image editing tool, there is a new research called Drag Diffusion, and it's trying to achieve the same thing as Drag GAN. The paper is still a work in progress, but I am surprised by how soon someone has tried to replicate it in Diffusion. It'll definitely be slower than GAN though, so the editing process will be pretty painful using Diffusion because you will have to wait like 10 seconds in between the edits instead of like 1 second for GAN. Up next, we have Dream Editor, which is a text-driven 3D scene editing research with neural fields, and lets you edit 3D scenes with just a text prompt. While text-to-3D is still in the early stage, this is like the early solution for text-based image editing back when text-to-image just started to take off. It's also interesting how Nerf is converging with 3D and text synthesis research this much. If you want to learn more about the latest Nerf developments, check out this recent video of mine. This person made an aerial version of image segmentation called Waldo V2 where it can identify objects from a drone or an aerial view. Even even the author was worried about releasing this publicly and it works really well on badly lighted data too. But this technology is probably not too hard to develop now since SamHQ is going to wipe the floor for any object detection tasks. But yeah, Waddle is pretty sick. There's also this really interesting headline recently, it goes like Harvard's new computer science teacher is a chatbot. And as usual, these type of headlines are of course pretty misleading. What actually went down is that the professor of their introductory computer science course, CS50, has officially supported students to use AI chatbots to help them to learn codes. They will also have a fine-tuned CS50 bot to answer any FAQ and have TAs review the bot answers, which is pretty neat for the TAs not having to repeat the same answer on how to install PyCharm for the hundredth time, but definitely they would be able to recruit less TAs, since now the replies can be automated by the CS50 bot, which is one less income source for college students. This Japanese company developed a full upper body tracking using AI motion tracking. The motion tracking looks really clean too, and I think this was probably made for VTubers, so people don't need to have a high budget to do motion tracking for virtual entertainment. Stability AI head of research David Ha aka Hardmaru, which I often quote in this series, resigned this month as did its COO, Ren Ito. Emat stated that Harimaru was originally in Stability AI for head of strategy to take a break from leading research but stepped back into it when they scaled rapidly. So as a Harimaru fanboy, I am glad that he is taking a nice break to reset his life from this crazy and rapid development of AI. Going next, probably not AI related, but this punchable AR experience is kind of hilarious. This definitely adds some calorie burning to the mindless TikTok scrolling, and it's like the embodiment of punching the air right now. Let's end today's episode with a Doraemon chapter where it, I wouldn't say predicted, but showed AI image generation. And it even showed copying art styles, which is pretty on point. Some people even found that there's this 1923 comic of AI drawing, which even nailed the year of the rise of AI. AI art. I even feel like it's fake, but after some digging, I found the original on Google Books. That is nuts. Anyways, let me know what you think about today's episode. Big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Marie's, Deegan, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.